probably get YouTube spanked for that, but uh, I kind of hesitate to do this video, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, I'll tell you the reason. I'm going to go, I've got reservations to sit on my front porch. We just got back from uh, Minden, Louisiana. We had to bring Lucy Bell all the way over there to the vet. Let me shut this off. Okay. And uh, Lucy's, you know, Lucy's old. And she's a big dog. And uh, she's, what, going on 10 now, I guess. Yeah. And big dogs, you know, their lifespan is a, a lot shorter than small dogs. So 10 years is really getting up there for a older dog. So anyway, she had something wrong with her hip, back, legs. And uh, so anyway, we took her to the vet that uh, truly cares about dogs and not just a, as a dollar sign. We got back just a little while ago. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the day sitting on my front porch. And I tell you about the ride yesterday and what we've come to realize. Okay, it's a little windy, so uh, you may hear gusts of wind. And my wife is watching funny videos, so you may hear hear her in there laughing. So. Uh, Yesterday, on the way back from Ben Wheeler, Texas, uh, I've realized several things. Number one, I do not like interstate driving on my motorcycle. The speeds in Texas are just too fast to be comfortable and relaxed and enjoy the ride. Uh, if you're going 75, you know, you're dragging your feet. 75 is comfortable when you're by yourself and you can zip in and out of traffic. But when you're with a group, and me, I'm the, for lack of a better term, temporarily the leader of that group if I'm in front. Whoever's in front is the leader of that group. So on the way out there, I led the group. And uh, I was going 70, 71, had my crew set. And uh, we only had to pass a handful of times because most of the traffic is going 75 or 80. <clears throat> so uh, when we did need to pass, uh, Charlie was on the back. The They call her tail gunner. They call anybody in the back the tail gunner or drag. Some call it drag, some call it sweep, but we call it a tail gunner. And we have helmet communication, so I can tell her when I need to pass so she can jump out in the left lane and hold it for the rest of us to move over into the left lane. And it's a smooth transition. Everybody kind of moves as a unit and uh, as a team and you accelerate, you pass the person you need to pass. And when everybody gets around, the tail gunner says, okay, we're all back over. And then you slowly back down to the speed that you caught up to the person at who you just passed. It's a fairly simple process. And if everybody's on board and does their little bit of a job, which is move when they're supposed to move and speed up when they're supposed to speed up, it all works flawlessly. And I have found that 70 miles an hour is a whole lot easier to relax on your bike and enjoy the ride than it is at 75. 75, uh, you know, when you're on a big bike, there's not much difference between 70 and 75. You don't feel it. You don't hear it. There's very little difference in the amount of wind. But you know that 75 is just at the edge of comfort. So anyway, I drove 70 on the way out there. And we had a good ride. My wife enjoyed it. Uh, the people behind us enjoyed it. And uh, on the way back, on the way back, somebody else took the lead. And I took the back door so I could get that GoPro footage of the people in front of me. 
Well, first, we were going way too fast. And Charlie and I, we were the last two. I was the last one. She was in front of me. Well, uh, they all made it through a stop sign. And when we come to the stop sign, we had traffic we had to wait on. So they got way ahead of us. Okay, that's a violation of rule number one. You look in your mirror and you make sure your group has gotten through the stop sign and then you proceed. You don't come to a stop, but you just put along and you look in your mirror and when everybody's got through the stop sign, then you accelerate. So we got hung up by the first stop sign and they kept on going and we come up to the second stop sign and same thing, they had no traffic and went. And by the time we'd got to the stop sign, there was traffic. So we had to wait on that stop sign. And by the time we got through the stop sign and got up on the interstate, they were a freaking half a mile down the road and we had to haul ass to catch up to them. Rule number two, when you get on the interstate, you don't accelerate up to interstate speeds until you're certain the entire group is on the road. Uh, but they didn't do that. They just took off. So uh, we busted our ass trying to catch up to them and we eventually did. And uh, and then there was a wreck. No, there was some left lane closed. So those arrows are flashing and the left lane's closed. We got over in the right lane. And they got in the left lane that was closed and passed some people. A real violation of simple common sense road etiquette, group riding etiquette, and uh, that was it. When they did that, that was it. We never saw them again. Rule number three. You do not fucking leave people in your group and just go off and leave them and never see them again. And uh, I'll tell you what. I'm not likely to ride. Now, my friend was with him, and I don't blame him. Uh, I don't think he knew how far back we was. But the guy in the front, it's his job to look back and make sure that the group is all together. You don't go off and leave people that you left with. It's sort of like uh, you dance with the one that brung you. And if you're in a group, you ride with a group. Uh, you don't just uh, jump off and disappear or leave people. And, uh, you know, I'm really trying to start this Southern Cruisers group and gather members. And as I grow, I'm going to eliminate members that don't know how to ride in a group or don't care about the people in their group or uh, don't care about others' safety and enjoyment of the ride. So uh, that's where I'm at. And one other thing, there are some real loony tunes on the road. You know, yesterday coming back home, it was solid traffic on the interstate. All doing 75, 80, 85, some of them 90. And uh, we, all of us, motorcyclists, were in the passing lane, but with many, many cars in front of us passing. And then when we pass, we all get over. No big deal. Just like any, anybody else. Well, this lady come up and tried to pass us in the right. And there's no, there's no room for it to pass us on the right. There's slow trucks in the right. There's traffic in front of us. But in her mind... She's going to shove motorcycles off the road and make her a hole. And uh, I got really concerned. I looked over at her, and she was just screaming and yelling at me. She was freaking road raging, insane, that angry. And the thing is, as soon as she got around us, she started tailgating the next people. And as soon as she got around them, she started... So that lady left Dallas, and it's solid traffic from Dallas to uh, Mississippi through Louisiana. So she was going to be angry and road raging her entire trip because there's always going to be traffic in front of you. You're never going to have clear sailing in Texas. It's a two-lane interstate. It should be a four-lane interstate for the amount of traffic that's on it. And... Uh, Today, same thing, on the way home from the vet, I was going 80 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone, and I had a lady about two feet off my bumper. She was so pissed that I was in front of her. 
going 80 in a 70. And as soon as I passed the sand, it was a sand truck. As soon as I got around the sand truck, I got out of her way. And there she went down the road and got off of the next freaking exit, man. Just, uh, I don't get it. I don't get the amount of angry, raging people that are now everywhere. And uh, I'm going to put a lot more effort into not going places by getting there with on the interstate because uh, it's totally not fun. The country roads that we ride on, those are enjoyable. And my wife and I, when we're by ourselves and there's somebody that wants to get around us, uh, and, you know, I understand people have places to go, work to get to, things to deliver, kids to pick up, doctors to go to, and we're not in any hurry at all. So when we get into a space where it's safe for people to pass, we will move over to the edge of the road and wave them around us. And people generally, people seem happy with that. Uh, their anger quickly disappears and they're on down the road. They're not our problem anymore. We can go back to enjoying our ride and they can go back to being in a hurry. But uh, yesterday taught me one thing. Uh, some people just do not have the group riding mindset. Uh, where one goes, we all go. You've heard that before. Where we go, where we, where goes, uh, what the hell is that? Where we go one, we go all. Well, that really is the group riding mindset. You do not just go off and leave people miles behind, not knowing whether their bikes are broken down or whether they had a wreck or, uh, it's just wrong. And uh, I, I was really shocked that people we rode with did that to us. And uh, I'm telling you, I, I told my wife this morning, we get another half a dozen members and uh, I'm going to post some group riding rules. And I'm going to tell people if these are not rules that you can uh, enjoy yourself riding within these rules, then you're not welcome to ride with us anymore. That's just... Uh, you know, we ride because we enjoy it, but we also ride because we care about one another. And uh, when you go off and leave part of your group, you obviously don't care about the people behind you. And you're not the, the, the personality that we want riding with us. So, okay. All right, I'm off of work. I'm drinking my, my orange juice, petting my dog, and I'm going to contemplate life. We'll see you.